Welcome back everybody to another update video. So we've got a sizable amount of films to look at today. Uh, five 4K films, three of which are part of a box set. And uh, yeah, some more boutique label uh, uh, films as well. And the first of which is The Girl Who Knew Too Much. Now this is widely regarded as the first Jallo film as it's from 1962. And uh, yeah, this is a, quite an old one from um, Arrow Video as it's from 2014. And as a result, this has become incredibly rare. It was initially on the Arrow Summer Camp sale on HMV, but it uh, got sold out. And then the whole uh, line itself got discontinued. So, uh, yeah, you can't get it on there anymore. I can't see it on Arrow uh, Films' website itself. And, uh, yeah, the only places I've been able to find this is CEX and eBay. Now, eBay is £25, £30. It's slowly going up. And, uh, yeah, thankfully I've got this on CEX for only £12. Which is only about £4 more than the uh, sale uh, price it was at and uh, still less than what it would have been originally. So uh, yeah, really, really solid film this is. It's got John Saxon in it who would eventually go on to be in Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Enter the Dragon I think with Bruce Lee and uh, as well as uh, Tenebrae which is another Jallo film. And uh, yeah, it's got three discs because you've got the Blu-ray, you've got the uh, DVD but you've also got the Blu-ray version, uh, the DVD version, sorry of the American cut of this film, which tried to make it more like a comedy for some reason, even though it's quite clearly dealing with like murder and all that lot. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a baffling choice to try and make it a comedy, but then that's just so typical of American, uh, you know, distributors trying to uh, make a film seem something it isn't for a wider audience, so I imagine it failed as a result. And you also get a booklet as well, which is really rather nice. So, uh, yeah, it's black and white, so it's not quite like some Jalo films where, you know, they were... Uh, in colour and have vivid blood, uh, blood uh, red uh, violence and or anything like that. So, uh, but it is nice. Uh, for some reason, all of the images are in colour in this. Not sure why, but uh, yeah, still nice enough. And uh, yeah, really did set the trend for other Jallo films to come from in the seventies from Argento and uh, Martino. So uh, yeah, and uh, secondly. We have The Ninth Configuration, the first William Peter Blatty directed film, one of only two, because obviously he only directed another one in the form of The Exorcist 3. And uh, yeah, this is really, really good. Even though I prefer The Exorcist 3, this is still a very good film in its own right. It's got a really good cast. You've got Stacey Keach in it, and uh, yeah, you've also got, um, oh, who else? Uh, Scott Wilson, who went on to be in uh, The Walking Dead films as the uh, old guy. And uh, yeah, you've also uh, got... Um, a score. Who, who did the score? Barry Deverzen, who I think I've done a, a heard of stuff from before. But either way, it's William Peter Blatty's direction and uh, yeah, the uh, uh, writing that uh, really does this uh, a whole lot of good. So uh, yeah, William Peter Blatty's fingerprints are all over this. But yeah, it's a, a film really you have to go into uh, with very little. Uh, you know, knowledge about it, but basically army psychiatrist Colonel Kane is posted to a secluded gothic castle housing a military asylum. With a reserved calm, he indulges the inmates' delusions, allowing them free reign to express their fantasies. But some are wary of the newcomer and his methods. There may be more to Kane than meets the eye, and the insanity escalates towards an explosive revelation. So, uh, yeah, hugely, hugely entertaining film, really engrossing, and it's just under two hours, so it's not particularly long. But yeah, that's from Second Sight, uh, I've got plenty of films so far from uh, uh, up to now. Though mostly only uh, single disc releases, nothing, uh, not many uh, as not many, uh, not as many limited editions as I would like. And then we've got three from Eureka now. Uh, the first of which is the Birdman, well, Birdman of Alcatraz, with the great uh, Burt Lancaster, directed by John Frankenheimer. And uh, yeah, this is easily one of my favourite prison set films because it's not trying to do the typical kind of prison film, you know. There's not someone trying to antagonise a warden, not trying to fight against the warden, not trying to escape or, you know, uh, get violent with anyone inside. It's purely character based and, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. Burt Lancaster is amazing in it. Yes, it's a little long, it's two hours, 23 minutes, but it makes the most of that uh, time, really, with its characterisation. And, uh, yeah, it's also got Carl Malden in it, Thelma Ritter, uh, Telly Savalis, and Edmund O'Brien. Edmund O'Brien has been a a massive uh, part of this year in terms of my collection. I've seen so many of his films so far. And uh, yeah, it's really nicely done. Get double disc, so DVD and Blu-ray. But again, as per usual, when it comes to uh, the DVD being featured, I don't really bother with it. Because, yeah, the Blu-ray is obviously the ultimate version of it. 
Uh, but yeah, you also get a nice booklet with. I really like that. I wish that was a poster, to be honest, because that would look amazing. But yeah, you get the cast being run down. You get talking about it. So it's basically called the Berman of Alcatraz because he looks after birds in uh, his uh, jail cell and actually comes up with a cure for a disease that, has, that ravages the uh, bird, uh, domestic bird population and becomes hugely famous while inside of uh, jail for it. And yeah, you've got a bunch of the posters as well. Which again, any one of them would make a good poster as well, even if they are in Italian. Uh, but yeah, I really like the fact that they show off Italian or you know other foreign language versions of a poster. And then uh, we have Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. Once again, a fantastic film from Robert Aldrich, who has done so many other films that I've enjoyed. What happened, whatever happened to Baby Jane being the kind of uh, originator to this. But I actually prefer this uh, to Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, even though that is... The more re critically revered film, but yeah, this is still great and uh, yeah, fantastic cast. Betty Davis, who also did was in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, then you got Olivia de Havilland and Joseph Cotton. Uh, again, it's quite long, two hours thirteen minutes long, but it's superb. It really does make the most of that time, and it's got a fantastically brutal pre-credit sequence as well. And uh, yeah, it's also got a oh, yeah, good supporting cast as well because you got Mary Astor in it as well, uh, as well as who else? I can't remember actually, uh, but yeah, it's got a fantastic score, fantastic setting, and uh, yeah, it really does uh, get across the whole insanity aspect. Unfortunately, the uh, cover got slightly damaged on the way here, so uh, hopefully I can get a replacement for that at some point. But it's only a single disc, so uh, no DVD here, but again, I'm really not fussed about that. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. And again, like with Birdman and Alca of Alcatraz, you get a nice booklet. And uh, yeah, yeah, again, you've got... That's a casting party, and then you've got uh, Betty Davis there, and then Olivia de Havilland there. Betty H Betty Davis became well known for playing this kind of role that she's in, in on this, and then you've got some behind the uh, scenes photos, and again, posters as well in different languages. So uh, yeah, really nicely done, and there's the director and the two leading women on the back. So uh, yeah, really, really good film that is. And then uh, finally from Eureka, we've got No Way Out. Uh, from uh, Joseph, yeah, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, who I've seen stuff from before, but I'm struggling to think of entirely. Uh, but yeah, still a great film. Uh, got Sidney Poitier in it. It's got a really good um, uh, le uh, leading role from Richard Widmark, and uh, as well as Linda Darnell and Stephen McNally. And uh, yeah, really solid film. Really deals with racism right on the forefront, and uh, considering this is from 1950, this is well before you know the civil rights movement or anything like that. So uh, yeah, well ahead of its time in terms of films, and uh, yeah, really really well done. That's 106 minutes, and uh, yeah, again you get the DVD and the Blu-ray. I actually prefer the DVD uh, one over the uh, the Blu-ray cover, but yeah, I'm not entirely sold on the. Uh, artwork for this for the uh, release of this so either to be honest doesn't really convey much about the film but yeah still again you get a nice booklet there's Richard Widmark as the uh, villain uh, but also the lead role it's a shame that Sidney Poitier there on the uh, left was uh, really rather uh, cast down because he is technically the uh, protagonist of this but you know that's just the way it is sometimes and then those two are again so yeah fantastic film Highly recommend it if you're into your more progressive films from times when they weren't really progressive. So, uh, yeah. Then we have the uh, Star Trek trilogy, the Kelvin Timeline. Now, I know this trilogy isn't massively popular in terms of Star Trek fans. But even though I've seen all of the Star Trek films, I do really rather like this trilogy, to be honest. And, uh, yeah. And I know why people don't, because it's not the characters aren't quite like they were in the old original films, but then it's a different timeline, so they're bound to not be similar to the uh, original characters. So I don't have a problem with the way they are in this, and uh, it's got good payoff, especially with the third film. So yeah, they're all on 4K, so you've got the first one, the second one, and the third one. And then you also got them on Blu-ray as well. Though I don't know why the uh, first film is the only one with a different... Uh, different uh, v um, look of the disc so uh, yeah but yeah still a great trilogy and I've looked at the uh, first minute or so of the three films and uh, yeah they look absolutely superb in the, the 4k and uh, yeah it really does make them come alive and you also get a uh, 
slightly decent but not particularly spectacular Kelvin Timeline uh, poster. So running through, through the events of the film. So uh, yeah, really nice collection that is. Been meaning to replace my Blu-rays for them for a while. Another film I've been meaning to replace my uh, Blu-ray with is uh, Demons. Now this was originally released with the second one in a limited edition box set but I'm not a massive fan of the second one so I only really wanted the first one so yeah you get the uh, new artwork on the back but you also get the uh, original one on the other side as well and uh, yeah slides out and it's on 4k it's got a really nice hard box as well it's not flimsy or anything and uh, yeah on 4k I've not actually looked at this to see how it looks on 4k yet but I imagine it will look good they have done before with uh, Arrow Video 4K phones, although this is only my uh, second one that I have bought from them, with Downey Darko being the first. Yeah, you've got nice covers for uh, artwork for both of the uh, discs there. And again, like so many other films that I get on uh, a limited edition or a uh, more highly rated version, is uh, another booklet. So uh, yeah, with the uh, cinema where the uh, majority of the uh, events of this film take place. So uh, yeah, it goes through the restoration, the cast, the crew, as per usual, you know, and you got some shots from the film. And uh, yeah, the titular mask there, which uh, sets off the whole demon aspect. And then finally, we have the most expensive 4K film I've ever bought at nearly £60, which is quite a lot, but it is celebrating its 40th anniversary. It is a film that never had a Blu ray or 4K release before this came out, so it's highly worth getting, and it is dead and buried which is released by Blue Underground, who are a really rather small company, but they have several films out at the moment, like The Final Countdown, and uh, I think The House by the Cemetery also has a 4K release. So, uh, yeah, it's really nicely done. I've uh, watched the first 10 minutes or so of this, and it looks great. And, uh, yeah, not only do you get it on uh, 4K and uh, Blu-ray, but you also get the soundtrack as well, which is an amazing soundtrack, to be honest, by Joe Renzetti. And, uh, yeah. Highly look, look forward to listening to that. It's directed by Gary A. Sherman, I think he is. Uh, Gary A. Sherman. Uh, yeah. Gary Sherman. Yeah, I've seen. I've not seen many of his films, but this is definitely my favourite of his. He also directed Port the Guys 3, which I wasn't a massive fan of, and also Wanted Dead or Alive with uh, Rutger Hauer, but this is definitely his best directorial effort that I've seen from him. He also did a film called Deathline and Vice Squad, which I've yet to see, but I have heard good things from, although not quite as good as this. And you also get a booklet with it as well. Uh, you've got all the uh, different uh, chapters as well on the back. And uh, yeah, again, like so many other booklets, it just goes through the film, talks about the cast. The cast is really rather interesting because even though I've not seen much from the two leads, James Ferencio and Melody Anderson, I have seen two other films from Jack Albertson, who is pictured here, who has been in two other films that are completely different to this because this is horror slash sci-fi, whereas the other two films I've seen him in is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which is obviously a musical fantasy, and then The Poseidon Adventure, which is a disaster film. So, uh, yeah, three entirely different films from one actor is uh, really rather quite rare. So, uh, yeah, and again, it's just going through different kind of films that this was influenced by or was part of the new wave of horror with uh, Phantasm and, like, so Prom Night and Halloween... And uh, yeah, you got Wolfen, and there's and there's the other film that I mentioned earlier, Vice Squad. So uh, yeah, really nice uh, collection. A little bit expensive, but you do get a really nice lenticular cover there, as you can see, which I'm not usually not a fan of because I hate the way they feel on my finger. But um, yeah, they are really it's a really nice collection. A little bit expensive, but it is a really rather small. Uh, low-key company that haven't released very many uh, films and uh, these are at the end of the day more cult classics that won't have a massive audience so that's why it's quite expensive but yeah really nice haul uh, lately uh, not going to be much more outside of the two new Arrow video releases True Romance and the Dijaman uh, trilogy but regardless yeah we've got plenty more to go for the rest of this month and uh, yeah hopefully August will be as good as this month has been but nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye